Melang. Good evening. The person said Halala is my childhood friend who used to lend me a BMX bike, a pink one. <laughs> and now she's a whole scientist and it's the first time in years that uh, she's actually watching me. Thank you, Manta. Thank you. Um, thank you so much to Poetry Africa. I'm going to do six poems. They are not more than 18 minutes. And I know, because I rehearsed. We are travelers. We carry our names with the beat on our feet. Rebarolong, Bakoena, Batlapimba, Sakwana, Lebahatla. We are Samburu North butterflies. And I, I stand on the backs of those who are called Bahanka singing songs that the rain and the wind never whispered to Dinuka. Badi Mubaka waiting to be praised with the buzz of the bees, the beats of the drums, they chant to my unsaid choruses. I stride on shoes of giants, creating the legacy of their quest, embracing their names in verses, Reflecting their vijaptious looks on lakes, pulling their strings from Khalakhadi, placing them on Burwa Ba Africa. Tikang Wayaruna comes from the reeds. They have built Maluti mountains with their hands. Beautifully engraved their narrations on sunburned hills, leaving their birthmarks on olive caves. We are Samburu, not butterflies glittering with diamonds attached to our wings. Living after ancient tales, our souls are wrapped in long wedding shawls. We, the wise ones who speak in riddle where our words pass through village gossip metaphors. Our lands are colored by chocolate pebbles and pale skies. These lands where warriors glide effortlessly over rocks, striding easily across long life distances. My people have placed the graves of their kings on top of Tawawusiu. They have shaped thorns to protect our languages, allowed our spears to rise in anticipation to create the intimate magic. And in the night of wisdom, we sing in puzzles. We come out of our cocoons like little babies covered with life. We jump like butterflies that have reached that glory. Our sounds travel far on the still air of storytelling and spell dance. We sleep with darkness calling our names. At dawn, the rays of the rising sun kisses our lips as Virgo the morning star make out our footprint. We are some guru, not butterflies, stringing chords from ancestors, guitars moving with songs of time. As the forest echoes our land names, we, the sand people, constantly in search of the grazing sun. Our red veins mark the soil, and the split blood of our warriorship answers with the safari snakes. We are some buru, not butterflies. Our roots are rooted in lowly mountains. Rere tobe la sukukuni. Mampuru mupedi moholo mosheshe mosheshe ilana. Rebarolong bakwena batapimba sakwana le bakhatla. Hotwa musuwa tunza rebo mankuwani rebo mantadise. And we are merely travelers carrying our names with the beat on our feet. We chant freedom, freedom, freedom. When they killed Bigo, they thought those who were born in that era will never learn the language of the soil. And through translation of words, heart trending, we were cultured into black consciousness. We looked at the scope of politics through the hourglass of the minority. 
agree that words like discrimination and racism exist beyond the thought of being classified as God's stepchild. I fell from my mother's womb when the 70s generation was confused with misplacement of color. I came to be when those with lighter skin openly sat in their own devil laboratories and workshopped how my life should be. In the 70s, my father introduced me to the faceless names of Nelson Mandela, Robert Subuka, Walter Sisulu, Oliver Tambo. I was shown the chains that bind my sisters and brothers who were called spies and terrorists against their own words of equality in their land. I was born when voices of black power stole Tieti Mashinini, Choto Satulo, Unhopotiro, Solomon Mashangu, and threw them inside a pit of hate. Apartheid was the word my community based churches wouldn't preach about. In the 70s, I learned that I was born different. And through Muzabalas of scriptures, I woke up doing in the street when the language I had sucked from my mother's breast was to be substituted with Africans. When my soul started to speak louder, my father took me out of Soweto. He became God who took Eve out of the Garden of Eden just because she had tasted the fruit of good and evil, right and wrong. In the 70s, I learned and saw the boat of fear that my people were sinking in, even when my father didn't want me to see. But now, a full-grown woman, I know I am the embodiment of my people. I'm a symbol of their strength and struggle. My feet freely raise from the North Star to the South Sand. I fight back to the world of racial dust. Badi Mubaka have sent me to wipe the dirty floors of race, class, and poverty that my father left untouched. I am Steve Bantu Bigo's descendant. And I know it's not a sin to be born black. The most important thing in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. I have, I'm very, very appreciative of all um, the male poets who have just shared in their works this week, um, and especially those who have daughters and who keep affirming their daughters, because as young girls, when we grow up, we look for our fathers. But if you're a father and you're out there and you have this relationship with your daughter, believe you me, She'll be twice as powerful. A child at three, a girl at seven, a rowdy teenager at 13, almost a woman at 21. I can't talk pretty. My own words are trapped between you as the father I never heard. And me, as a loose daughter, around dance halls, moving too fast, making too many mistakes, looking for beauty in other broken mirrors. My mouthpiece spits lock lines, not of life I came from, but the absence of a home I should have known. My quest has been to look for you in the corners of my memories, picturing that the tip of my tongue will remember your presence. I chose love and chained it to my body. Prayed like that three, seven, thirteen-year-old girl that daddy, daddy will appear through the rays of the sun to play hide and seek with me so that I can echo, come back! Come back. Come back. I smell of every man's scent, crawled a million times into their beds, dreaming that if they hold me, then it's you. I've cemented edges of my pain in letters written in secrecy. Love those words, find lessons tucked between your lies, looked to find myself where you left me, when you left me. 
did he? For all those years, all I ever wanted to hear was that this body is not a curse or a scar. Often I felt wrong, I felt sad, I felt cheated. And had you been around to tell me that I am loved, I am special, I am protected, wouldn't matter what all these other men out there say because I would have believed you. Okay, three more to go. Set poems out. I wish, like Shakespeare, I knew the color of love. How it takes form and twists the emotions. But I have learned to listen to the solidness of my ancestors' voices. Shh. Today, in the garden of fear, through transition of dreams, my gods told me that love comes unseen, unannounced. Shh. I decided to touch the feet of love and to walk through your moon circles in its shoes. Today I looked within for all the answers and there I found few lessons. Love is the unknown and the blind. And through unidentified ritual wires, I heard love begins in your eyes, travels to touch your heart, and only sometimes lands in your brain. So I say, shh. I decided to touch my own feet to walk beyond this grave of loneliness and decided it starts here. This love chapter opens. It starts here. My book has finally found the beginning. But when I reach the river bank of my pain, my super consciousness will remind me across the streams of pain that love can still buy my tears. And the loneliness and frustrations I have experienced are worthy of my growth. And once my feet travel through the space of this time, over my shoulder, I will know no matter how hard it had been, I made it through. So I sing, she An unseen friend touched my feet. Today, I stand on top of this cliff. My eyes look up to the horizon of life. My fears of love sets with the sun, but rises with the moon and the stars. And this morning, this very same morning, I shout, Because I have walked miles of growth and experienced the true meaning of love. It ends here. This love chapter locks its ties here. My book has finally found the end. She got more. Love has touched your feet. God, find me a man. Unbelievable, sizable, and dark. A man who can carry all of me. Lord God, find me a man with a nine to five job. A BEE brother with a square shoe. A CEO, COO, CFO, or just a minister without portfolio. As long as he can build me a 32-room house with a view to die for. A home for the God that can accommodate my grandmother, mother, sons, siblings, cousins, aunts, and all my other challenged relatives. Those are my uncles and their wives. A man who can buy me a Ferrari, Maserati, Austin Martin, 
He must pay all the house bills, the bond, water and electricity, the gardener, the helper, and all the other benechutes. Lord God, find me a man who can make love to me morning, day, and night. And he must give me lots and lots of children. But be a real father to them, not just a sperm donor, if you know what I mean. Lord God, find me a man who can eat everything that I can cook. Moroho, Mautana, Mohodu, Lidikilana, and cook everything that I can. Sushi, spaghetti bolognese, shepherd's pie, leg of lamb, preferably roasted. Lord God, find me a man who can stand my dramatic episodes, who will know when I don't want to talk, walk, or polish that damn silver fork. A man, mighty God, who will know when to stay away when I'm on like PMS moments, if he knows what's best for him. Let God find me a man who will be faithful and not make me his second, third, fourth, tenth wife. A man who will not ask for installments. No 50% now and the balance later, but pay full lobola for me and buy me that damn diamond ring. And he mustn't be scared to hold my hand and walk next to me on our wedding day. Lord God, to be continued. Thank you again um, to everyone. Um, it's been such a pleasure. It's one thing to write for yourself, uh, but another thing when there's an audience to just eat and receive your words. So thank you for all. Where I come from, hearts are chained together, beating in one rhythm, searching words like fat music. Where I come from, hearts are chained together, beating in one rhythm, searching words like fat music. So this, this is for fat girls who hold the sun entwined in their arms. Carrying purple's names in their calves, laughing hard when the wind sings our fears. They are beauty conceived of madness, sunset shakes, mouth full, bodies living through lessons. The winter of their summer outshades their comfort. They can hear themselves beyond the touch of their toes. This full-size girls who allowed the moon to bless their feet until the yellow blanket cloth their waist. This is for fat girls who play philosopher's stones to build temples in our minds to write life with one hand to walk sideways with idiosity. Fat babies who perch on mountain tops reciting Asian chronicles. Fat girls who sharpen swords with their teeth to solo adversity, thumping, calling, healing through our pauses. Their being bears breathless authority. Harmony resides in the depth of their spirits. So this, this is for fat girls. The lady who is my aunt, an old woman, my grandmother, the wife, my neighbor, child girl, my sister, my soldier, the prophet, my mother, every witch healer I have ever met. This is for all warriors, schizophrenics, maniacs who ski on river tears to feed the void within our souls. Their faces bang, knees tall, stomach packed of minutes, born of seconds, earth eaten blind. Where I come from, they hijack laughter with tongues. Sending false idols to our eardrums, saying, the TV says, the radio sings, cover girl sells the dream of being complete, completely nice. They named you fat to own your pride so that you can die and break your stride and call you no good enough. Anyway, we are thighs thick, but huge, waist tight, breast tall, walk styled, voices loud, neck thick, lips big, nose broad, feet long, that we are the creators of lullabies born at the baseline between the composers of this armor called fat love. Thighs thick, but huge, waist tight, breast tall, walk 
stout feet long. Fat. Love. Thank you, Poetry Africa. Thank <laughs> you.